Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. A truck hit somebody in his church, pieces the leg. He stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back. It was not a strange miracle. That was the miracle of ushers. We have lost so much we are not aware. We don't know our spiritual heritage. Pastors don't research. They just get up and preach nonsense. Nonsense! And everybody claims he's doing something. I don't say this in a cynical way. My heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry. Nothing current in what the spirit is doing. We celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suit. And we have a nice car to prove that it is working. Is that how much we love the body? We have lost touch with our spiritual heritage. We don't know what happened before we came. And we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of God. A custodian of a mystery is also a historian. One who meticulously studies the dealings of God. How did God move in the 50s? How did God move in the 60s? How did God move in the 80s? When revivals died, what happened? Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday Monday morning, everybody is standing and arguing with their ATM, no matter how much they have in their account, because they, they miss the bank for three days. I'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival. The spirit of true revival. Night or night, you reign on night. Revelation chapter 3. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on mine. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is what I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing heart is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, 
it services will run every day something must be happening spiritually i i don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent There are there are few territories where you go that you i mean there should be these kinds of places these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying 10,000. Somebody is saying 1 million. Say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. That community life of the kingdom is not there. There is no place they can retreat to. When they have been wounded and beaten by darkness. When their faith is stretched, there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge. And you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise. They will allow you to do any conference you want. But make up your mind to create a physical portal for people. All hell will fight it. And those people will usually be Christians. We owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things. There has to be somebody... In ancient times, they usually are these elders. And when Israel starts messing up, Moses and all the people will say, Okay, let me remind you. Because then some of you were not born. How by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of Egypt. Right? He did this and that and the people are listening. And at the end of it, the people say, Ah, we repent. We will serve the Lord. Satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there there is there no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you oh, may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he's doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day anytime just come with your boat 
and we see a Christian dragging a he goat to a, a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me i hear what i'm saying i will not do it in the secret i will do it openly how many people have died in the church who should not die because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them there are people who are sick today they are dying some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night they will criticize me in the day and call in the night you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your own. Oh, sing thou fountains of the deep and weep, God, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth thou spirit of the deep and weep, God, you are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your own, mighty on your own. You are mighty in this place. Mighty on your own, mighty on your own, mighty on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, God. You are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and we part You are mighty on God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do we must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for god to find the people listen don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with god what are you doing i'm a pastor no 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 what are you doing for a living look at that stupid statement as though being a man of god is a call to they just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me, I have come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one-tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me. This mystery. This mystery. It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us.
there's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little, people are looking, they are feeling offended for your prayer life because they are hoping you backslide so that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow and seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life revive my life please pray inside and outside pray revive my life this can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. Please sit down, sit down. sit down a revival is a season of reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy a reawakening A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness i'm going to be very fast because i want us to pray 
how do I know that a territory, please help me. How do I know that a territory is under the influence of a revival? Thank you. There are certain parameters. Number one, the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for God. Corporately, not just individually. There is a restoration of God consciousness in that territory. When there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow, smoke anyhow, live anyhow, do anything they want to do, when they want to do it, it may not be their fault, but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed. Increase God consciousness. There have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god when they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in that this our generation Imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um, flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it. You know something is wrong. Right? Because there's a better technology than that. That's what happens in a revival. People are forced to talk about the move of God. The newspapers are forced to carry something. Do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not because they are all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of evan roberts people will lay hands on the magazine just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take people will start falling under the anointing repenting by themselves having visions of jesus restoration of love and passion for god don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again listen let me tell you how the spirit of the antichrist works in a territory the first thing that happens is satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result oh apostle joshua selman you are the talk of the town the, satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and and, and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then he will throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down God no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between God speaking to you in your secret place and God speaking to a territory God has his mouthpieces everywhere and then compromises begin to come in 
what you would have talked about you no longer talk about let me tell you how satan destroys great men he makes us victims of our messages if satan knows that god has anointed me to liberate people in an area he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas the reason is because when that happens you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might are you seeing why you need discipline love for god love for god your passion your obsession about god when you love god there are indices there must be a restoration of that love some of you sitting down looking at me you know how you were with god tell yourself the truth ah don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out like the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out like the fire again you see if you love god because of husband the day the husband comes there's no more pursuit to love god you see why we look you know i teach you a balanced teaching here when you tie your love for god to things as a bride you are in for a shock i can love god because of anointing i hope you know that and that anointing can lead me to go and fast because i want power the day the power comes and i can have one or two results i now know that the anointing has come are we together now so no matter what I, you don't know my secret place is it not when i come out here it's only god that knows whether i'm serious over what i'm saying or not you cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of god is serious with god or not because you see god is so merciful he will always confirm his word in the midst of the people and it usually is a justification to men of god to mean they are intact be careful that god is still using you and the power of god is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing you must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning love for god i am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for god lord if you do this for me i will come and testify and then the other part of the story we don't say it out but it's in our heart if you don't do it i will hate you so it doesn't seem to happen oh god no husband again am i the worst sinner on earth and, and you hear all those kinds of statements how can you tie your love for god for these kinds of things success can distract men please hear this there are many teachings on success that i'll bring this year but let me tell you success can distract more than failure in fact failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong but success can distract whenever you begin to see your candle rise brothers and sisters that's when to catch god that's not when to leave him and say everybody behold the celebrity you will die like a chicken when satan wants to throw you he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you he throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it are you getting what i'm saying that's why certain people will not be serious with god and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody and then something will happen and crash them down love for god this night we are addressing our love for god lovest thou me more than this one of the first indices of a true revival we can look at zaria as a city and samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city we can look at abu as a campus and know whether our love for god has diminished when somebody let me not go ahead of myself number two marks characteristics of a true revival number two the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory and outpouring brothers and sisters may god never make our territories without men who can speak the truth are you hearing what i'm saying the devil is out to frustrate men of god and water down people who can speak the truth please let me tell you something brothers and sisters if you are a christian many things must change in your life 
your lifestyle must change your conversation must change not by the energy of the flesh there is an alignment your job is to do that alignment if you do it well the transformation must happen there's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of christ to a point that somebody will have to say i'm a christian for it oh you're a christian so you're a brother in the faith that's a serious issue are we here? You, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about koinonia, for instance, and say, ah, koinonia, you know apostle, ah, you don't used to see me. You say, you mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of Christ. They called them Christians. Who is calling you a Christian? Can those who hate you say, I hate this person, no? But I know he's a Christian. You can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking, my spirit is okay. You are not all right. Please, let's let's end this. You are not all right. Let me tell you the truth. No, you are not all right. You are watching porn. See, you see, let me tell you something. I'm not condemning you, don't get me wrong. The difference between a Christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the Spirit. When, when you are sinning unconvicted, you are not in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. If by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit, you went to your friends, they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take, you don't know what happened, you gave into the flesh. That conviction is a sign that you are in Christ, that you can return. And the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. It said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. It says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there the true spirit of holiness please i speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, i got to hear of course and one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how I'm doing. I'm very fine. Very fine. Very fine. Healthy in the spirit. Very fine. I intend to continue with God for a long time. I decided that from the start of the journey. We are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings. Because we know it will have to force us. We still want to enjoy some things. You see that? Because if you make a firm decision, you too, you know. You know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number. But you don't want to. So you are not serious. That's the meaning. It's as simple as that. Because you live, Jesus, I live. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you live, Jesus, I live today. I live to pray. A true spirit of revival. That you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there. When the old man wants to touch it, he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross. And you mind your business and leave that money there. Even though you needed money to eat the spirit of holiness let me tell you if we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory we will never experience the fullness of god we will not see miracles and signs and wonders please let's not mock god i know what i'm saying is hard but you too you know i'm not lying you know i'm not lying don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life and the key to unholiness is carelessness Bros, you there? There's one party we're having. 
say, eh, but I don't drink again. Say, just come, Jerry, carelessness. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand. Don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God. You can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God. There has to be true holiness. There has to be true holiness. I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, restore to my life the spirit of holiness. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Especially if you know you are affected by what I'm saying, please pray. This is a threshing floor. It's a family. Please lay your hands and say, Lord, I've been pretending as if this is not an issue. But tonight, you have brought your word out of love. Not to condemn me, but to remind me that you are still waiting. I receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness. Those outside, please make sure you are laying your hand. Oh, I separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh. The impulses of the flesh. The appetites of the flesh. The appetite. The lust and the carnality that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it. But something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely. And I allowed. I, I frustrated the manifestation. But tonight, oh God, in this place. I receive grace. 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 It's not by the strength of the flesh. You can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh. Remember the cross, the place where grace comes from. Your old man has been nailed, therefore mortify your body. Take advantage of that grace. Let it become an instrument of righteousness. Please pray. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, O oh God. That in lifestyle, in character, in conversation, that everything about your life, there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job, in school, in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify God that way but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say Lord I overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge God is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling. Visiting the guy carelessly. Doing all kinds of things carelessly. You are a Christian. God is bringing this message to salvage you. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. The true spirit of holiness. No, you can't start accepting bribe. Not at this level of your life. You used to hate it before. Don't all of a sudden love bribe. You are a Christian and a Christian indeed. The spirit of God in you and the righteousness of God compels you to hate immorality. Not out of fear, but because of your love for God and your desire to be used by him. Make sure it doesn't leave.
That's a fire you must not allow to die. Aside from immorality and the rest, what of vain glory? What of self-seeking? What of vanity, ambitions that are not consistent with Christ? Please pray. This is a threshing floor tonight. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. If nobody has told you there is a problem with your life, I'm telling you there is. If you are giving room to the flesh, I don't care what excuse you bring. God does not condemn, but he does not condone evil. Many of us have been praying, Lord, I want you to use me. I want to see your power. I'm showing you the secret. It overrides fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place. The third sign is massive salvation of souls. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. It's not enough for people to come and be saved. They must be saved well. Well to stay well and grow. Massive salvation. That is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival. Listen, if there is no true passion for souls in your heart, something is wrong. Let me prove to you that it's unnatural. How many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident? Nobody asks who is a Christian there or who is a Muslim. Everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying. Every time you see sinners, I want you to imagine an accident scene. Imagine a fatal accident. What would you do? There are some of us, we have roommates, we have people in our workplaces. Is until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying say I'm too fine how can I tell this guy to come how can I lead him to Christ massive salvation by the way the Lord while I was preparing this the Lord gave me an instruction I'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by God's grace next Friday's miracle service you are coming with two sets of requests the first is the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch God will do for them this year you will watch what God will do he will surprise you I, I will I, please you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down right no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when saul landed on the floor he knew that this was god See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? So you're going to bring one prayer request, your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones, but please, write it down. Not names of enemies, and that's not what I'm asking you. Names of sinners, sinners, people who you know you are agreeing with God. Let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of God on your life. Be passionate about where his heart is. Are we together? If I am a millionaire and you want to get my attention, won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate? Because that will be the meeting point. Are we together? We want to call God's attention, but we are not facing where his heart is facing. It's not enough to pray and fast. You must be serious about sinners. There are some of us, when we make altar calls here, you now look at time and say, God, let's hurry up. To you, it's not a big deal. You've forgotten that he saved you. You've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again. I remember one of our ladies who years ago, they were all unbelievers, you know, non-Christians now I mean. And God, I mean, 
saved her she became saved i think while on campus and we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings god touched her brother i think god touched her mother three of them were all saved remaining the father the father was a hardened he wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom we told her keep praying Just don't say god will not touch them keep praying one day she received a call he was saved in living faith when he was saved i was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car is i don't know it's like his family members they drove down and say which depression are you in that would have made you to become a christian ah you will see salvations that will scare you the day you go and look at somebody in your family you will think it's a mistake you just hear, you say what are you doing say i'm praying in tongues say are you joking say I, i'm a sanctuary keeper i'm, I'm I've, I've left the world since I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem Ministry. I said, it's a lie. The one day he called me, and we were talking, we just spoke, and he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God don't say you love God when a guy loves a lady he can have 5,000 in his account he will withdraw it leave the minimum balance and tell her eat she say I don't want to stress your body say no 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 those eat and it's me that is paying for this thing but when it comes to souls we are afraid but someone is telling you I, I would love God but he's giving flimsy excuses why don't you tell the person two of us let's climb bike and come are you that passionate and unembarrassed do that and see the way god wipes your tears see these are kingdom keys there are no shortcuts to this thing souls when i pray many times i say oh god use koinonia as a platform to save sinners you see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming i tell you give them chance to come i remember somebody uh, I, I, I don't know exactly. I think he was he's, he's an imam or something. One of these, these uh, very strong guys. He was seated outside when I was teaching the reality of heaven and hell. This was somebody who is learned. You understand what I'm saying? And he sat down outside and was thinking. And while I was teaching, he saw a vision of Jesus outside. And he got born again. The day he came for counseling, I could not believe it. Ushers, I think one or two people. There's one of our brothers in Ushers too who was like that now totally transformed serving the lord working in the ocean department who told you god cannot save them your stubborn father your stubborn mother your missing brother who comes back once in three months i'm telling you when the power of god lands on them we don't know the power that raised christ from the dead that's why because all we are teaching about in church is money we don't know the power if a power can raise a dead In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua, Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International, International as he, he takes, takes you on a journey into, into the wisdom of God's Word. Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia.
ask you up again in the course of the service. God bless you. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. your voice in one minute and cry for a visitation tonight. Let it be a sweet sound to you, O oh God. For a visitation tonight, oh God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to greet one another. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night. appreciate everyone for the sacrifice it takes love for God to appear before him every now and then and I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ before I go on with the teaching tonight I, I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very prophetic move of God um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace you have to look at the broader picture every man's destiny what we call assignment whether for an individual for a church a ministry or for a territory is their contribution i like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets a contribution to the big picture god has an idea he's a, he has an agenda we've taught again and again on the agenda of god the book of colossians the first two chapters examine intently the agenda of god it tells us the predeterminate counsel of god hallelujah uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not um, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with God. This is more than that. Praise the Lord. It's important that we, we understand that this is 
not just a ministry this is not just a church this is a move of god and that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture that which god is doing upon the surface of the earth when you realize this you will come with every sense of seriousness hallelujah the second thing i want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations it's important that whenever you come for koinonia generally speaking whenever you go to any ministry any church um, take time to study the operation of god in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predetermined counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um committed to those people so those who come must be aware that i am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see if you don't realize what is obtainable bishop oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity that you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible so the lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place please um ladies and gentlemen i want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people i know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation they just love to see sinners saved that's wonderful but um this is not one of those platforms believe me i want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit this is not a minor contribution to what god is doing on earth if you if you see it that way you will you will not give your best there's been a lot of prophecy about zaria right from before some of us were born there's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season so we're not just stumbling into a move of god resident within the north no there is a mystery behind this move of god that is coming in this season and what god is doing and so i want us to understand that we are prophecy being played jesus in the book of luke chapter 4 the bible says reading from verse 16 downward that he took the book the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something i pray that one day as you study the bible you will see koinonia there that as you study you will suddenly connect and say god said this will happen we are seeing that this is not just a circumstance but this is prophecy hallelujah i need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared 
It's very, very important. There is nothing, listen, there is no major move of God that happens without being spoken about. I used to see these days, years ago in visions. I never knew it would be this way. Glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this. And I knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of god can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are seeing please value it i want you to value it i want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of God. You know how pastors say, look, we are going places. And the members say, I'll be there with you. This is not one of those things. It's not just that we are going places. You will see how this move fits into prophecy. It will happen. I've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you are here seated in this place tonight, it's because there is prophecy upon your life. Believe that. If there was no prophecy upon your life, you would not be here. I'm not motivating you. I am telling you that among all these people, there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with. That's why God made sure that you have to be here in this season. And it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place. The fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it. Are we together? Yeah, the principle of substitution is that which we see in, this, in, in scripture. Again and again that the mandate of a man, not just his mantle, his entire assignment can be given to another. We read about Saul in the Bible. Right? Saul, the son of Kish. A time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham when judas iscariot betrayed jesus christ god insisted that there had to be a replacement for him you see that so brothers and sisters please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories. Listen as a school. Pay attention as though you are being trained for something great. I've always given my life and the presence of God and the word of God utmost seriousness. You never see me distracted in the house of God and in the presence of God. You must please pay attention. 
this is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this it's a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that God is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional I want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation The lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day. In 24 hours, something must start fighting you. Are we together? No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this place, you can choose to argue, but it's like a virus. It has caught up with your spirit. Hallelujah. You can pretend eh, there's nothing usual about it, but I tell you, if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say Kai, but this person cheated me oh. that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of god hallelujah radical transformation i trust that god will grant us grace that would be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people literally without exaggeration of people that have been blessed just through these teachings 70 percent of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person there is a mystery to these teachings the presence of god and its power to change people i've gone for meetings and seen people talk and i thought i was hearing myself and i looked at them and they said sir you have never seen me but i have 200 of your messages i have 250 of your messages i have your message till last week that's the power of transformation to change state right 
so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i've believed a lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach 
there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you're only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time i find out that what i've communicated is not accurate i do not have any embarrassment to come back and say look let's realign we have seen something clearer hallelujah is god speaking to us expect transformation you can measure transformation your degree of change your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be uh, coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things saying the same things having the same convictions no the word of god alters your convictions something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing i detest stagnancy in my life like cancer i detest it i'm obsessed with progress i like to see progress that's why i hate stagnancy anyone who is close to me knows that i'm constantly in a state of transition change you can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically When we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations, part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy. There are some of us, there was one stone near your house from the time you were born. That stone is still there. Nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better? It's still there. As a monument that does not motivate anything, only brings pain and regret. You remember they flogged you near that stone. You remember that's where they drove you out of the house nothing to inspire you the word of god should change you that at the end of every koinonia service you should just sit down like this and get up i like it when the word of god enters people and i study the reactions of people to the word not just oh preach preacher that's there's a place for that but that your spirit is is receiving something and you're saying look what am i doing is is god is giving me too much opportunity i'm wasting grace i'm making the word of god of non-effect let the word of god challenge me he said the spirit entered into me ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2 and set me upon my feet the spirit entered when he spake unto me he brought an idea that is superior to that which i have known and it compels change change with results immediately that you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately 
make certain vows and commitments enter into certain strong personal covenants with God on account of what you have heard the Bible says meditate on these things it says give yourself wholly to them it says that you're profiting brothers and sisters ask God how much I pray for you I don't think I pray for you I pray for myself one tenth of the way I pray for you and my prayer is not God give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh God let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one i know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when i see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people it gives me great joy so it pains me when after a long time our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow we must step up this year in the name of jesus christ say amen you see if you don't step up a time will come you will think that what i'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated number three the third thing you must expect every time this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite you must expect revival revival an awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me i used to love god i used to be passionate now i don't know what is happening let me go and find out part of the vision god has given us is to make this place a place of refiring a place of revival hallelujah that in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where it used to be long tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they're just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here I'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run 
and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we're operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of christ today every city is supposed to have these provisions when a city does not have that provision there is no apostolic authority over their city the hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city please i want you to hear what i'm saying you can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities it's not a name it's not a title it's an office they are the gatekeepers of the happenings of god in that city they communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church when darkness is about to enter that city they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city stop koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city that's when you will know what we represent in the spirit never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people god's idea is that in every city there must be apostolic authorities but because of the disalignment of many people those who have called have, have been called have refused to align god will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there this is the concept of multiplication of grace when people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit God will have to come to his servant and say this was initially not in your curriculum but to not to frustrate my counsel I know how uneasy it is for you but I will multiply your grace you see that when I multiply your grace I will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in nigeria are pastors i don't mean pastors like kaito it was never that design but there is a sudden restoration if a pastor ever functions and a prophet ever functions and an evangelist ever functions if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities they will get into error because you see the primary of an assignment of the of the apostolic office is not just teaching is kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of god that you know is a hard person the word of god is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament the grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace even if you are a quiet person they're coming from afar they're coming from afar. Oh, 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 Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too 
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.